No, it's challah bread. Uh, I, I don't mean like First chabada. of all, all this is challah and chabad. Say it right. Don't say it wrong. Chabad Libovich. The chabad. From, from, from Russia. But, uh, yeah. Dude. What What year? What do you mean? Do you know, like, when they start in Russia? It's Long. a place in Russia. Oh. 1800s. 1812. Okay. That's where we get the first, the Tanya is written by the first Rebbe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, what's it called? Dude, when I watched the one documentary I sent you. The with, wild, dude. Bro, there's two documentaries that if you think you hate Jews, dude, or some, if you think that you got a problem with these guys, yeah. watch them speak with Australian accents <laughs> or British accents. I want to know why our ones... First of all, Yiddish fucks. Can I play that one clip? Yeah, play whatever. Uh, Are you? you, you I'm not even up? hooked up. Oh yeah, I mean, you can play whatever clip I mean, you want. You might, hey, dude, edit this out. See, I guess if it, I hook up. But. See if you, um, yeah, I'm not connected on Bluetooth. So see if you're connected on Bluetooth. I mean, every do they like code switch American ones? It's like there's mean? like it's all, app- no, it's Yiddish is their first language. But I'm saying like, do they the Australian ones don't talk like that? I'll try to pull up a clip, dude. Like, there's a fucking. <laughs> I'm sorry. This, like, no, I'm you're just, good. Just hook up the Bluetooth. This there's is too many windows open because there's so much. This is overstimulating. This is dude. way overstimulating for me. Man. I thought that like you can't put me on. You can't put me on the chabad. I thought they got like so the best AI or something that did this. When I saw a dude crawling out of the sewer, dude, I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" The, one, the best one I saw in my deep research was the Hasidic drug dealer Samuel Leibowitz. He's British. Yeah. I mean, I'll try to pull up a clip if we pause it of him. He's fucking hilarious. Pull the clip up. This it, is my bet. This is my top yid. <laughs> I'm going to end up with this question. Before we ask the last question, I want to once again thank the goodness Yisrael for facilitating and hosting and enabling this kind of session, this format for those who are here and I mean, those bro, who are watching from this other is places. Yiddish. It's fucking There nuts. has been a tremendous increase in anti Semitism <laughs> lately, like nothing we've seen in recent years. In Congress, in our own backyards, Jackson, Tom's River, Ramapo, and across the country. Ramapo? What should be Dude. the response of a Ben Tyra be? Let the man speak. Just davening? Should we be engaging in a response across social media? Should we write letters to our elected officials? Should we look to move to Eretz Yisrael? Or should we lay low, keep quiet, and hope it passes? But isn't that what the Yidden did in pre-war Germany? May I write to as we speak, Ladaiti. A tremendous, tremendous, tremendous contributor to anti-Semitism are three Jewish politicians with Jewish names, Jewish faces, who are going after the city so president of the United yeah. States. And you yet, you can understand that. Yes. What we feel and what we say about that president. These guys are like but jazz whatever. music. This is like the scat. Are <laughs> they are in the front, front, in front of this battle against the president without any gavul. One is the head of one committee, one is the head of another committee, one is a sitting senator of our state of New York. It's a bazillion. It's a churbin. <laughs> Someone told me the other day that there's a website coming out of Florida of a gentleman, I forgot, uh, that, he, that he said on his website. You probably learned these a, words underground. It's a Jew coup. He says the guy has three million followers on his website. It's no volume. <laughs> to me, that's only the... <laughs> These assimilated Yidin that don't even know that they, what a Yid means, they don't even know what a Bechalal means to be a Yid, they had a message to us. Do we realize we're in Golos? Do we realize what Golos means? Do we realize that Golos means we're in a host country? And thank you for letting us in. And thank you for not kicking us out because our real place is Eretz HaKodesh. Not a thousand years ago. Today, last Sukkot, when we said this is what it means. And <laughs> All right, dude, that's enough. What the fuck dude, is I mean, Sukkot? <laughs> so I, I tried, dude, I got to... <laughs> Dude, I got a book Imagine on him. Imagine hearing that under your concrete floor in your basement, dude. Dude, I got a book on him. I got a book on him Holy called The Rebbe, The Rebbe's Army. <laughs> Just trying to fucking learn, man. You yeah. Know, I'm not cultured. Holy shit, dude. Dude, it's fucking hilarious, man. What the fuck is going on? What but the- to hear the, the the one guy's dad, the one guy got uh he got touched in um he got touched in Australia in the mikvah. That's all right. So dude. he got touched in the mikvah. He got stroked off by a security guard. 
And you know, it's the same as the Catholic Church. They all kept it under wraps. Yeah, yeah. The dudes, but then the community, they don't like Could it. Happen to anyone. They're real closed off, dude. And they don't uh they don't like it when they go to the regular authorities. Mm-hmm. So now they're all coming at him saying, Oh, it's the Danny w-. I think his kid's name's Danny or something. They're like, Oh, it's the Danny Wax show. Like he's putting on a show, like he wants all this attention because he got touched. Holy shit. You know, and he's sitting there going, he's asking like the head rebbies, like, dude, is this guy still touching people? And the guy's like, Maybe. They don't give a fuck, dude. Did you read the Vice article? It was like the child rape assembly <laughs> line. No, no. So, like, this is the weird thing about the tunnels. So, (laughs) the tunnels allegedly are going to, like, mikvahs, which is, like, where they, like, wash off. So Uh, Hold on. You want to get educated on a mikvah real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So, the real purpose for the mikvah is so that, hey, if you want to clean spoons, get them kosher. If they get into the meat or the milkies, they cannot combine. Milk and meat meat can't combine? Milk and meats can't combine, so they got to wash it off. It's a holy water thing. That means thing. 1002 is fucking <laughs> it's pretty very much, yeah, anti-kosher. It's pretty much like uh, it's a pond where you can clean shit. But it's for girls. After they have, they have the periods, right? After they have their nidda, they <laughs> go into the mikvah. You say the normal word. <laughs> what? Dude? I'm trying to learn. They call their periods niddas? Niddas. Okay. Yeah, once you have that, hold on, let me read my book. <laughs> do the knitter, dude. This is the ultimate L for Jews. Oh, dude. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the knit is like a menstruation period. Yeah, but like this this was in uh Mick allegedly, and then the child rape assembly line thing for Vice, they were saying like this rabbi was like, I rolled into a mikvah or mitvah, whatever the fuck it's called, and there was a rabbi butt fucking a little kid oh yeah and saw the dude roll in and just didn't stop they don't give a fuck and then he was like dude what the fuck is your problem can't you see i'm doing something here and everyone went in on him and he was like saying it's like upwards of 50 percent of like his sids get fucking touched coming up it's like a rite of passage for those dudes yeah i think that's why that danny wax guy is getting all that yeah so as far as the chabad luvabitch (laughs) <laughs> the world head that's the crazy thing is it's the world headquarters for Hasids in New York. That's like pretty fucking insane. Well no, nah, they're they're a sect. But they said this is like their it's one their, in Crown Heights is yeah, gullus. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. So like dude, I don't want to freak you out though. So I don't know what sect those dudes I played were. And but the Chabad, yeah. they they're they're put <clears throat> they're ta- they've talked to every president since Nixon. Oh yeah, they they're trying to see pre- the pictures. They're trying to portray these dudes like they're uh, like some whacked out Amish. Well, the thing and is, they do that and they try to say that they have no affiliation with Israel and they're actually anti-Israel. They make a billion dollars a year. They're f- friends with every Israeli prime minister. Obviously, he was encouraging Netanyahu to speed things up to bring on the Moshiach. That's the Messiah. <laughs> All right, yeah. So like blowing up Kushner's Gaza to bring the out. Oh yeah dude It's nuts The main Shabbat guy that's fucked up Is um Oh You know what pissed me off was the fucking Marvel shit Oh yeah I mean that was crazy They're all shabbat up too Yeah obviously dude It's it's Hollywood Yeah but I mean <clears throat> It's This one fucked me up So that's There's RFK Oh yeah dude You know RFK I know, that dude that dude's brutal who he's taking a picture with. Yeah, but the guy in the picture in the back, that's the Rebbe. Oh, okay. That's the main Rebbe. Yeah, I mean, the the weird thing about these dudes is they stop at like third grade and they're super poor. No, nah, they don't <clears throat> they can go up to like fourteen. Learning. Yeah. Bob Dylan, big time Chabotter. No, he's not. Yep. Bob really? Dylan. He had a uh what's his real name? He had a flirtation Zimmerman. He had a flirtation with Christianity in the 80s, but the Lu- the Lubavitch guys came in and saved his ass. Yeah, they get him out of there. And uh, his main dude, his main rabbi is this dude named Manus Friedman, and he wants to destroy all the holy sites of the Arabs, kill all men, women, and children, just go take Israel, stop fucking around. Whoa, Oh, dude. yeah, dude. Openly, yeah. Th- these dudes are just saying this like no big deal? They don't give a fuck, bro. Yeah, I've I've seen like vi- there's videos of Hasids that are just fucking crazy. Like that one I seen in Germany, that dude just throwing up on a chick and then hitting the dude in the head with a bottle. I mean, the one I sent you is nuts. Which one? The one from the city of Joel uh, thing I watched. Yeah, well, that's like those guys do drug trafficking. 
Times yeah. of Israel report, reported on it. They'll get Colombian Coke dealers to come in with like $4 million, and they wash it with what's called a jamach, what's where that? it's like they fucking have a, a, a free loan. Yeah, it's a bridge loan. Yeah, it's like a bridge loan where they just take in it. It's like a gamak, something like that. Come on, dude. I got, I'm trying. My mouth doesn't make these sounds, bro. You want me well, to read this stuff? The city of Joel stuff's weird because like they spaz, like everyone's out to get us, and like they fucking roll into like cities and just fucking multiply like over and over again, then take over like townships. Then it's yeah, like, they do like eight to fourteen kids. That's fucking. The that, one dude in Australia had seventeen brothers and sisters, or sixteen brothers and sisters. They're not so different from their Muslim brothers. Oh yeah, but uh, these got those guys in Yoel are anti-Zionist, so they they're not all the same. That's why I was that's why I was saying that. Yeah, they're so there's like Satmars, and the dude from England is the Satmar. He's the best. <laughs> he did time, dude. He did like all this time in jail, and now he's back to the community. Yeah, that's fucking insane. Like the 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 weird shit about this is the amount of lies that is going on about how it actually went down. Like from when it went down until now, I've read a different story literally every fucking hour. <laughs> like the, at first, where what do I have here? Yeah, at first it was New York utilities were filling shit in. Everything was completely fine. They're, and they couldn't figure out why it was fucking happening. They're f- trying to refill some fucking holes, a huge fucking opening. Then they try to find it. Allegedly, that's, that's the first story. They get to here and like, oh, this is where the fucking thing is. And then I fucking read a story where it's these guys warring with themselves because yeah, there's well, misfit youths yeah. who dug a fucking tunnel. Well, they're misfit students. I don't think they're youths. What is a student? They can be students, like, way into being... Dude, if you could see how old fucking Sammy Leibowitz looks like, well, he's 38 years old. This <laughs> motherfucker's like an American 60. Okay. He did time, though. He was a drug mule. Oh. That's, like, they, they do remind me a lot of the Amish and, like... The Amish are also having a tough time right now. Some dude up in like Lancaster County just got like raided by the state troopers for like milk and shit like that. But like the th- the, the tough part about this is like you can just like the, if this was priests, like we were talking about yesterday, if priests did this and they were pulling stained mattresses out of a fucking tunnel, all hell would break loose. There's tons of accounts of fucking child trafficking. Like the Chabad dudes are like the mafia. Of those, like, that is a real bad group of dudes that can do whatever the fuck they want. So it's not fucking crazy to think that maybe they're fucking child trafficking. Well, the pro, I, what I've, after checking all this shit out for exactly one day, I figured out that <laughs> they, sometime in the 70s, these dudes became popular. And this is on borderline like a cult. And they were saying, like, there's a couple of things going on from there. <clears throat> like the world was get the, so sorry, man. They think that they're the chosen people. Okay. So oh, like they have 613 commandments and all they want us to do is follow seven of Noah's laws. That's all we got to do. That sounds and, then, and then we can make the whole world a better place so that the Moshiach comes. So like, this is Looney Tunes. Yeah, obviously dude. They, nuts. they came up with this shit and then, but the world was getting so complicated that, like, some people, I think that they were, like, a little bit dumber or whatever. Yeah. They were like, oh, this is sweet. I'll just jump on board with this. I'll get on board with this. These guys will take care of me. This guy, he was handing out dollars to everybody he met. The Rebbe would give a dollar. He, <laughs> dude, he was hand out, like, five Gs a day. They became, like, collector's items where people would, like, laminate them yeah. with his picture on it. Is this one of the dudes they thought was a messiah? Yeah. Well, it's the main guy. It's, like, the re- like there's no, like, current smear. That's the Smearson guy. Schneerson. There's no, like, current... Powerful Rebbe, I don't think. I think after he died in 94, everything split apart. And all this warring shit they're talking about yeah. is a result of all that shit. That must but, be a power vacuum, dude. <laughs> yeah, the one BBC thing I watched was um, they were saying that it was like they didn't want to leave. They, did, they don't want to let Hitler win. That's why they keep their traditions. Okay. So, like, people in their minds sit there and go, One like, guy, dude. Dude, I know, for real. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, it's kind of like um, <laughs> if they if they go back to their ancient traditions, yeah, like, pro- before the war stuff. Digging it, tunnels. Then it's like they they didn't win. The Nazis didn't win. Yeah, yeah Judaism sure. is still alive. Were these dudes getting rounded So, it's a combination up? of, like, it feels cozy to go back to the old nostalgia. Yeah. And to be, like, sticking it to the fucking... Others, yeah, the ones you hate, <clears throat> but they're they fucked up because they isolate the shit out of themselves after the war. They don't talk to anybody, 
they don't fucking know what's going on. They're not allowed, like, at this point, they're not allowed to have, like, TV, phones, none of that shit. So they're yeah. in outer space, bro. I, wa- I watched a whole thing on, like, what they can and can't use with the electricity and stuff. And there's, like, loopholes that, you, like, not, not, maybe not orthodox, maybe orthodox, where, like, on Shabbos or whatever it is, they fucking have, like, clocks that you just pick up and it lights up so you're yeah. not turning on a light. It's very I've been light. in buildings where the elevator just keeps going up and down. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking crazy loophole. Yeah, but, uh... That's like the main thing is that they stick to themselves and they wait for the next party and they have these fucking parties where the rabbi comes, the rebbe comes and they start singing and dancing. Is that where they're like fucking yeah, rocking back and forth and like wrecking forth. bleachers? It's fucking nuts, dude. What, what was the tie in with, um, the Chabad and the Maxwell's and shit like that? They are all these, they market themselves as celebrities and powerful people. And like, this is going back to like the ancient fucking Russian days yeah, where yeah. they would, they Whoa. knew they were fucked. They didn't want to get put around. So they would befriend the czars. So wherever they're paranoid, they're isolated. Yeah. And then where, wherever they go, they're afraid of like the local people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so instead of like just going, Hey guys, we're a little weird, but we're cool. We're quirky. They just go to the power and, and they buy bef- them. And they buy them. That's fucking And then insane. then they blame guys like me and you for thinking we're assholes. They're puppet masters of dudes like that guy in Argentina. The so guy these, these are like the dudes in the Sopranos. Remember the Sopranos when he was fucking yeah. arguing with that rabbi or whatever the fuck that was? That was a great line. What'd he say? Where he's like, You fuck with us, it's like look at what that we did to the Romans, and Tony's like we are the Romans. Yeah, yeah. Sopranos is a good show. Testament. Back when every episode was pure gold with Shane Gillis, our big kahuna, and Matt McCusker bringing the heat every time. Every episode was a non-stop laugh fest, the kind that kept you hooked and coming back for more. Shane and Matt were on fire, and so were we. But now, it's a different story. What used to be a comedy powerhouse is now just another cash grab. Half the time, Shane's not even there. Instead, we get Matt's unfunny fart friends, guests, and Lamar. The stoner producer who can't get anything right. The spark is gone, replaced by mediocrity and degeneracy. Very, very well connected. You are officially blacklisted. You are smashing my wife again. Show some respect. Lamorp's a mess. A stoner who shouldn't be anywhere near a mic. And Matt's so-called friends. They make watching paint dry look exciting. It's like the world stopped turning. The red hot energy faded to a rusty haze, leaving us with a shell of what MSSB used to be. But fear not. We're here to keep the spirit of the Old Testament alive. We're all about those legendary moments, the laughs and the killer chemistry that made MSSB great. Will the pod ever return to its roots, its origin, its fan base? I do not know. Nor do I dare to hope, but wherever there is darkness, there will be the light to meet it. Welcome to the channel where the Old Testament lives on. Relive the magic of the man, the genius of Shane Gillis and Matt McCusker. 
enjoy my brothers enjoy